In this episode, I'm going to talk about two axioms. Well, the first axiom is pretty optimality, pretty straightforward. The other one is symmetry. Um, it's a bit more complicated than pretty optimality. All right. Well, a rule, a bargaining rule F, is called pretty optimal if it satisfies the following. For any bargaining problem you are given, SD, the rule should be selecting a feasible payoff vector from the set of pretty optimal uh, vectors. All right, so remember PSD. PSD is the set of pretty optimal um, uh, payoff vectors. And so therefore, your rule should always be choosing an element from this set. If this is the case for any bargaining problem, well, then we call this rule pretty optimal. Okay, as simple as this. Second, while the symmetry is uh, anonymity, uh, it's, uh, uh, it, it requires a bit of additional notation, but the intuition is very simple. It basically tells, me, it tells us the following. If uh, the bargaining problem is symmetric, well, then the solution should also be symmetric, all right? So that's kind of a fairness idea, all right? Uh, I mean, if, for example, they're going to split the cake and the players are risk neutral, etc. So it's a perfectly symmetric problem. And we also obviously define what we mean by symmetric problem. Well, then the solution should also be symmetric. Uh, so how do we define the symmetric problem? Well, what we are going to define this pi, the capital pi, pi is the set of all permutations of n. Uh, you may hear this for the very first time, but we actually use this notation, I'm um, sorry, uh, concept a lot. And in fact, we will use it later in social choice theory as well. And also a matching, I believe. So a set of uh, all permutations. So a permutation, this is small pi, this is capital pi. I'm sorry, my notations may not, may, may not be perfectly clear. A permutation is nothing but a function which maps set of players into itself, all right? Um, so what does that mean? That means um, I'm going to do a simpler version with three players, player one, player two, player three, okay? And then I have another, you know, the set itself, player one, player two, player three. Well, uh, one permutation is basically we change the names of the players. So instead of saying player one, when I say player one, I'm actually, I mean player two. When I say player two, I actually mean player three. And finally, when I say player three, I am going to uh, refer to player one. Okay, so it's very important that this pi is going to be one to one and on two. All right, that's, that's important. So pi is a bijection. Uh, one to one and on two. I mean, for example, sending three to three as well is not a, uh, a permutation, okay? So again, the idea, so this is one pi. Obviously there are a bunch of others. You can send one to three, two to two, and three to one, okay? Um, or you can send two to one and then one to uh, one itself and three to three itself. Uh, I'm sorry, two to one, one to two, and then three to three, okay? So you can generate uh, lots of permutations. So all of those permutations basically create this capital pi set, all right? Well, then I define this. So x is a payoff vector, remember? So it's basically v, oh, I'm sorry, what is v? Sorry. So any x, remember the set of feasible, uh, so it's coming from s probably, but you can, you can define this for any x. So x is a payoff vector. Let's say uh, 5, 10, 15. Okay, so this is what player one gets, player two gets, player three gets. That's the idea. Now I'm going to define permutation of x. So how do I define that? Well, it's simple. It's x of pi i given that i is in n. Okay, huh. so 
What does that mean? That means when I talk about player one, okay? So now I define uh, this new vector, payoff vector. So when I say player one, remember according to my pi, so this is my pi, uh, player one is now new player two. So therefore, I should be writing here player two's payoff, 10, instead of player one's, because one is now new two, all right? And when I say player two, I actually mean player three, so I should put player three's payoff. And then when I say player three, I actually mean player one, and so I should be writing player one's payoff. So therefore, this is the permuted payoff vector. So this is how I permute the payoff vectors. If you change uh, the permutation, um, you are going to uh, get another permuted vector, all right? Well, then, uh, next thing that I'm going to define is the following for any subset of Rn, S, um, and for any permutation pi, uh, the permutation of this set S is basically the set of all permuted payoff vectors, all right? So I have a permutation, which is an element of the set of permutations, all right? And then I have some sets, S. So what I do, I basically uh, shuffle, reshuffle all the payoffs in the set S, all right? That's, that's basically what I do. Well, uh, hoping that this is clear, uh, let me define the symmetry and then I'm, I'm going to sort of um, uh, give you an example for two player case. A rule, a bargaining rule F is called symmetric if for any permutation, for any permutation, we have to have that when I permute the set S, we actually get the set itself. And when we permute the disagreement point, we are going to get the disagreement point itself. If this is the case, well, then the, that means the game is, I'm sorry, the, the bargaining problem, problem is symmetric. Okay? If this is the case, well, then any player i and j should get exactly the same outcome. So FISD basically means, remember F is a rule and F gives me, uh, F of SD, F of SD is a payoff vector. FISD is the ith component of this vector. FJSD is the jth component of this vector and they have to be the same. And this must be true for any IJ uh, set of negotiators N. So everybody should, so if the game is symmetric, well, then everybody should get the same outcome, okay? Well, as I promised, let me talk about some examples when we have two players, because the three player cases, um, I mean, we can talk about three player cases as well, but picturing it is not possible. So imagine our initial example, right? The buyer-seller problem. So the 100, 100, the maximum surplus. So the D was equal to zero, zero. So for example, this is a symmetric problem. How do I know that? Well, first of all, the set of players is one and two. All right, so the one and two. And so this, there are only two permutations pi one, I'm gonna call it pi one and pi two. So what is pi one? Pi one is basically sending one to one, two to two. So this is pi one. And then pi two is the following, one, two, one, two. So I, I send player one to two and two to one. Okay, so this is pi two. Can I have any other uh, permutation? No. So things are simpler when we have only two players. So there are only two possible permutations. Well, what does that mean then? Well, when I pick, for example, any point x here, x1 is equal to, I don't know, 20, and x2 is equal to uh, 75, let's say. Okay, so this is x equals 20, 75. The question is, pi 1 x is itself, right? So that's the permutation I am interested in. 
Um, so what is pi 2x? Well, it's remember, I am just renaming the players. Player 1 is now new player 2. And so therefore, player 1's payoff should be indicated by the player 2's payoff. So it's 7520, basically. Okay, so this is pi 2x. Well, I mean, this two doesn't refer to the player. Okay, don't don't confuse. It's just I just put uh, a, a different. I just wanted to put a different name to uh, the different permutation. If it is confusing you, just ignore it. But this is what pi is. Okay, this is the pi. So ignore this one. So uh, let's ignore it, literally. Good. So this is the permutation. So for any x, pi x is this one. Well, is it in s? Well. X uh, pi x is 75, I don't know, somewhere here, and 20. It is clearly in my set S, okay? So any point you take here, all right, permute it, well, then you can be sure that that point is also in S. So in fact, uh, the 45 degree line, I mean, when we have two players, that's the thing. You draw the 45 degree line. The question is your set S. Is it when you basically uh, try to close uh, the, 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 the set S uh, and, and closing over the 45 degree line? Is it going to be perfectly fitting to each other? Yes, it does. So therefore, it's a symmetric uh, bargaining problem. And also, uh, I'm sorry, I uh, uh, forgot that. The D also is uh, a zero, zero, right? If I permute it, uh, pi of D, is again zero zero d itself so therefore this is a symmetric solution what does it mean it says therefore the solution should be the bargaining solution should be symmetric ha huh, so what does that mean for example if i choose uh, 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 to give only player one everything remember uh, 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 f of s d was equal to arg max x1 s in individual or rational what, what's whatever. Well, in this case, if you remember, the solution was this boundary. So this is clearly not symmetric. Right? The, the game is symmetric, but the, uh, 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 the outcome, the solution is clearly not symmetric. So in, in a sense, this is a sort of a fairness uh, concept. Well, obviously, the symmetry assumption doesn't say anything about uh, what if the game is not, or the bargaining problem is not symmetric at the first place. Well, then the solution doesn't have to be symmetric, okay? Uh, it, 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 it basically imposes symmetry only if the game is symmetric. Well, let's talk about if uh, another example where the bargaining problem is not symmetric. Well, once again, two players, uh, but this time, for some reason, uh, player one has higher utility, okay? Uh, for some reason, maybe he's more risk-loving, whatever. Um, so this is 100. So this is what the bargaining set S looks like, suppose. Well, is this a... So this is where 100 is. So it's 100... 100. Oh, I'm sorry. This is 150 maybe. Yep. So is this problem symmetric? Does it satisfy this part? Well, it depends on the D as well, right? Well, if D is, for example, 0, 0, uh, it, it clearly satisfies this. If D is something else, if D is, for example, right, 10, 10, if this is D, well, it still, it still satisfies this. Okay. Well, what about this part? Does pi s equals s? Well, I mean, let's check. So, for example, I have here, uh, I don't know, 180 and, uh, and, and then 5. Okay, let's suppose. This is my x. So x is equal to 180 and then um, 5. Well, then what is pi x? Remember my pi? Player one now, player two, and player two is now player one. And so basically I switch the payoffs, that's it. So it's five, 180. Is this point also in my S, um, in the set S? So five is here, uh, 180 is somewhere here, okay? So it's this point, this is pi X. Is it in the set S? No. Huh. So therefore pi S is not equal to S. So therefore this game is not symmetric. 
and therefore the solution doesn't have to be symmetric. Okay, so that's the idea of symmetry. I hope that was clear.